What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangeli here with the ISO 8 review for the Power Armor team. Now, Power Armor is what we call a two-turn combo team in that they have two turns to accomplish everything they need to do. Uh, if there's anybody left up at the end of the two turns, they probably need to be stronger, uh, which should happen by the time, you know, at least War Machine gets to ult is it's over. Because of that, we're not building them for sustain, we're not building them for Trixie Hobbit stuff, we are building them to do as much possible damage as they can, as quickly as they can, when making sure that the two turns that it takes for them to do everything they need to goes very well. So we're going to start with Rescue. Rescue is a prime fortifier candidate. Main reason why is, number one, she doesn't hit the opponents. None of these attacks do anything. All of these affect self and allies. So because none of them even begin to target your opponents, there's no reason to put Skirmisher or Raider or Striker on any of these. Second is Tech Shield. Same exact thing. Barriers all allies, apply regeneration. In war, they get two. Nothing even targets a member of the opposing team, like we'll see with Falcon in the future. So there's no reason to do anything else. You could technically make an argument for Healer, but her health pool sucks, so and she goes first, so it's not really going to help anybody out uh, on that team realistically. So for it, it's for it's fortifier. Same reason why you put fortifier on a character like Domino or maybe Loki. Uh, it's really simple. She needs to stay alive. That's all she needs to do. Her strength doesn't exist. Nothing here makes a difference. Nothing here makes a difference. She's all about shield, shielding herself, shielding the others. So making Fortifier her ISO pick will give her just a little bit more survivability that one, you won't have to waste too much gear. As you can see, I have a gear tier 10 rescue. I don't need to put much else into her for her to become viable at the point I need her to in war or no, nope, pretty much just in war. Yes, I'm sure that you can make a justification for something else like healer, but again, she's not really hitting anybody. And if by the time she's using this attack, it's too late. You know, this doesn't do damage to begin with. Maybe Skirmisher, but even then, that's questionable at best. So, for this, giving her a little bit extra survivability will help the rest of the team. I say Fortifier, no questions. Moving to Iron Man. Iron Man sucks. But, Iron Man does this cool thing where he and all tech allies gain an extra crit chance. Um, and then... Every other ally gets extra. It's basically just giving out extra crit to everybody. Crit chance, uh, gaining some damage for power armor characters. So you have two options. You can make him a striker, or you can make him a raider. Now, obviously, I chose raider because I'm leaning into the crit. And while rocket barrage is unavoidable, which means it can crit, it also cannot be blocked. So you can crit an attack that would normally be blocked, like by say something like a deflect, uh, it will just happen. So it's one of the easiest ways to potentially put the most possible damage. This is also very good for the Wave 1 Avengers kit, but we can look at that some other time. Uh, as far as all the other abilities are concerned, yes, obviously base damage might help, but he doesn't have great base damage. And again, when you look at it like this, I haven't had to invest too much into him to make this team work. Uh, he's still gear tier 10, even though I could push this button and bring him to 11. Uh, he just needed a little bit of push from Raider. And if you check where he ends up, he's at 35% crit chance. That becomes almost 50% at the next tier up. Big deal when it comes to hitting characters. Raider is pretty much a no-brainer on Iron Man just for how this team works out. Falcon can go in a lot of different directions. Um, the major pain about Falcon is how he interacts with the team. Now, if you click auto, he's gonna strafing run first, then he's gonna use Red Wing. So you don't wanna auto with him, but that lets you know what he does on like AI, like on defense. So when you look at Red Wing, it fills speed bar for self, clear stealth from all enemies. Because it says clear stealth from all enemies, that means that it is an attack, not just an ability. Because it's an attack, if you use this ability and he has Skirmisher on him, Whomever the reticle, the little circle, is on when he uses attack will get a vulnerable. That's just how that works. 
Uh, it is hitting everybody, but it's not doing damage, so it can't crit. So crit damage on him isn't necessarily the best. Dual SMGs does justify crit damage, as we've said before, because of the extra crit you get from Iron Man, etc., etc. It's not wholly unreasonable to uh, put crit on him or just raw damage. He doesn't have a phenomenal damage stat to begin with. And again, he's more of a utility character. Same kind of thing goes with Strafing Run. Totally justifiable to put crit on him, but I think that you can afford just the little bit of luxury of allowing this character to place vulnerables on people, specifically some of the targets that might be the hardest ones to get down as this two-piece combo team does its thing. Um, nothing really to note here. He already has decent block chance. So Raider's fine. Striker's fine. No need for healer. No need for fortifier. He's pretty sustainable as he is, and he's very fast. It's very hard for someone to just one-shot him at the beginning of the fight. Since you're using Red Wing first and not any actual damage attack, it's reasonable to put a uh, Skirmisher on him, as I have, but there's really no reason to feel like if you put on Raider or uh, Striker, either of those were bad options. It just kind of flows with what the team's trying to do. Next, we have War Machine, uh, Crit. Crit. Uh, <laughs> you know, he already gains a decent chunk of damage from just being on this team. He has a decent amount of piercing. If Iron Man's an ally, he gains crit damage. So his crits are worth more than the average 130%. So you're really, really, really leaning in to the ability for him to crit, especially as you look, his base crit chance is 25 with this ability. Plus Iron Man is gonna add uh, an extra, what is that, 20% crit? Uh, and as you bring up more and more into Raider, you can get closer to 50, 65%. Not unreasonable numbers, but since the biggest thing he does is right here, since all of his attacks are multi-attacks, right here, right here, and since he's always hitting more than one target, this is the best example of a Raider character I've ever seen. It's Raider. You can make an argument for... Striker, if for some reason you think that damage is more reliable uh, with his kit specifically, I don't think so. I think it's Raider or Bust. And last, we have Ironheart. Ironheart is wide open. Uh, in that, you can quite literally put almost anything on her and she will do her job. The biggest thing to note is uh, she does have a pretty decent amount of focus. Usually about 4,500 is the, the cut point for where characters at this much investment should be at. But this, in war, is always going to apply at least defense down, or you can apply two if you tier four it. So this is never gonna not apply defense down. So it's a little bit weird to try to give her extra focus through stuff like Skirmisher, uh, just to apply that, because it's going to happen anyway. I have her set to Raider, basically because of how Iron Man interacts with the team. Again, if you're using this team without Iron Man for one reason or another, well, then clearly Raider stops becoming a high-impact or high-value ability. Some people like to take Iron Man out of the team and replace him with Ultron to beat some other teams. That's different. That's a different team comp. That's, that's more of an on-the-fly team. And yes, while Raider is still going to be good on these characters because Deploy Flares hits multiple targets, because Heartbreaker hits all targets because Prototype Repulsors at least hits one target. You know, there's a reasonable things. And it's also nice to note that when she calls an assist from Iron Man, Iron Man um, might, if he had Skirmisher, be able to do more, but he doesn't need it because he has Raider, and even though that attack can't crit and count it. Uh, that's a little cute thing you can think about if you're trying to build that out, but irrelevant. Any character that hits multiple people or multiple times tends to lean towards Raider, on this team, this team loves extra crit. Uh, it's like a match made in heaven. As far as the power armor team is concerned, it's a very simple team. Uh, I almost feel like this video was unnecessary, but I'm certain that at some point, someone's gonna wonder. Just how they work together, uh, I've seen great deals of success. And again, the power difference between my team is relatively dramatic. You know, 78k War Machine, 72k Ironheart. 
50k rest of the team, and a lot of them came down to red stars I pulled after the fact. You can see gear tier 11, gear tier 10, gear tier 10, and then these guys are 12 and 13 respectively. These characters represent the damage of the team. Everyone else is just setting them up for it. Whether it be Iron Man's passive, making sure War Machine stays alive, Falcon's special, giving them the speed they need, or Rescue just giving them the offense up. There's really no reason to look outside of that. So this is uh, my best effort towards this. Comment below, let me know if you think that uh, anything I said was wrong. It'd be really hard to see anyone else putting out a different build for these characters. Maybe Rescue, maybe Falcon getting crit, but other than that, I have no idea. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.